Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Melissa. If you are new here, welcome to my channel. I speak about missing children. I also have a series called Gone Too Soon where I speak about celebrities that have passed away. And I also have a new series called um, Missing Adults where I speak about missing adults as well. So today I have two new cases for y'all. If you are subscribed to my channel, remember to leave your name in the comment below. And I will give you a shout out in the next video. Do not look at my nails. I know I do not have my nails on. I'm supposed to get, I just ordered some new ones. You know, I check where they're going to get here, but they're going to get here soon. Probably. <laughs> Donald Scott Trena. I'm sorry if I pronounced his last name wrong. He he went missing at age 33 years old. Um, height and weight is 5'6", 170 to 180 pounds. A fleece jacket, a long sleeve sh jersey shirt, jeans or heavy work pants work pants possibly oakley sunglasses carrying a black wallet and a black collar phone caucasian male brown hair brown eyes um daniel may have donald sorry guys uh, may wear wire frame eyeglasses he had the following tattoos the black online on his upper right arm of a scottish flag in the name coranan any show or a banner and a horse below it in a color confetti flag, possibly with a scold on the left side of his upper back. Um, Donald has facial acne. He may have a beard or a mustache. His nickname is Ardon and Donnie. Uh, so Donnie was last seen leaving in the YMCA, Young Men's Christian Association where he's been staying in the New Berlin, Connecticut on April 3rd of 2018. He's left his vehicle behind in the parking lot of the, his clothing belongings and money in his room. He has never been heard from again. Few details are available in this case. I think with this case, the only reason that there's a lot, there's not much information is because he probably, the family probably didn't know that he was missing and it took them a while to figure it out. You just never know, but these cases you know, are the ones that I really want to keep. And all these, all the cases that I do, the missing and missing children and the adult children cases as well, um, I want to keep them out there because, like I said, just because they don't, there's not a lot of information out does not mean that you should stop talking about it. So we're going to go to the next case and we're going to be speaking about Nina Maria Co Cohi. Um, she went missing at 57 years old. Her height and weight is three. 5'3", 130 pounds. Co suffered from multiple medical issues. She suffered from maternity cancer and her lungs in hordeo, but it went into remission about six months prior to her disappearance. She also has bipolar disorder and addiction to alcohol and prescription pain medications. Um, Caucasian female, brown hair, blue eyes. Nia... Um, has a tattoo on her leg and a scar on the right side of her neck. Towards the front, she wears eyeglasses. Some agency referred to her as Nia Plorcord. Um, Nia was last seen returning to her Midtown, Connecticut resident after a dentist appointment at 2 p.m. on July 16th in 2015. Her firm records indicate that the phone was in use and she was home until about 8 p.m. She has never been heard from again. When authorities searched her home on July 29th, investigators found blood on the mattress. In June, the month of her disappearance, um, she had gotten a restraining order against Gary Ger Garrier? Yeah, I don't know if I'm saying his name right. I don't care. As a man she's been dating, she applied for the order on June 16th and it was granted on June 29th and it was set to expire in the summer of 2016. She stated, stay she was afraid of him and that he had threatened to kill her in her sleep. A photo of him is posted with this case summary. He has criminal record dating back into the 1980s, including felony convictions for assault, unlawful restraint. And in August 2015, he was arrested for violating the order. He admit he contacted prior to her disappearance and had met with her with him in a supermarket the week she went missing. In October, additional charges were fired against him for felony assault and misdemeanor, reckless endangerment. These charges stem from an accident with 
her on June 26, three weeks before her disappearance. According to court documents, um, he stabbed her in the neck with scissors. She didn't seek medical attention right away, but didn't, didn't go to a walk-in clinic where her daughter and son-in-law for treatment after they saw the injuries. The blood police found on her mattress was apparently from the, the June 26 attack. Due to her health issue, she is considered to be at risk. Authorities haven't stated whether he's a suspect in her disappearance, but foul play is suspected in her case as an uncharacteristic of her to leave without warning. So this is my last case. I think with this one, I'm, I'm going to lean towards him knowing more than what he's saying. Um, he knows what happened. He knows where she's at. But he's not going to say it. That's the thing. He's not going to say it. He's he he's not. I'm, I'm we hoping he does. Yeah. We always keep the hope that they do come clean. Because at some point in your life. When you have something. That you did something wrong in your past life. It's going to eat you alive. And I hope that's what happens to him. I hope it eats him alive. And he comes clean to what happened to her. Because he knows what happened to her. He just doesn't want to say it. Um, and there's just... There's not enough evidence to... To arrest him. There's no body. Am I saying that you can... You have you could win a case without a body. It's happened before. Um, But... You have to have so many physical evidence that the jury can say, okay, yes, they have not found the body, but yeah, it's pointing to that's what happened to this person type of thing. Um, so it's, it's hard, but the detectives have to work really hard. But like I said, they've I've seen cases where they have won cases without a body. It could happen, but you just have to have enough physical evidence to prove to the jury and to the judge that they're that the person who committed the crime actually committed the crime because you don't want to come back and, and say oh well it was the wrong person you know it just you you just you want to make sure you win the case without a body is it's i've seen it happen and it, it could happen um but yeah i think uh and this is another thing too like i feel like there should be a law where people like him need to stay in prison because I have seen cases of of women that have put restraining order on their abusive spouse they don't care you could tell you, you they don't care I've seen I've seen women literally lost their lives because their abusive spouse they don't care about a paper you not. they're not gonna listen to authority they're not going to and I feel like there should be a law. If you have a, like a past, like a, whether it was, no matter what type of crime, but if it was like, if it was a crime where you've hurt people before, not kill, not analyze them, but like hurt them, and you get in a relationship and you're abusing your partner, and your partner gets a restraining order, baby, Keep them in jail because they're not gonna listen to the paper. You you let these people out, and they end up commit, and they end up unaliving the person that that they were told to stay away from. These people do not listen. I think that should be a law. If you have a a past to where you've hurt people before. And you are now in a relationship and you are abusing your spouse and they put a restraining order. Yeah, they need to stay in jail. They need to stay in jail until they figure out what it is. Because to me, that's not, it, it just, it's not right. It's not right. I don't think it's right for you to have someone who you know their violent past and have them out for what? That make no sense. But yes, guys, that is it for today. Um, I will see y'all soon with a new video. My parents are supposed to be going out of town I, this week. It's already Saturday. 
but this week I think I don't know exactly when I do have an event on Friday um, so I may post a video before I leave but I'm not for sure because I may go live on my TikTok account so yes guys y'all have a great day and y'all enjoy your Saturdays and have fun bye